Hi everyone, Bria here from Etched Actuarial and in today's video I'm going to be giving you 50 unique tips for exam P and FM. But before we get into that video, I want to remind you that if you haven't already signed up for my study strategy tips and advice emails, go sign up for them now. I'll leave a link in the description below. In those emails, you're going to be getting tons of different tips and study tactics that I don't share in this video and tons of other just helpful advice. So you'll definitely want to check out those if you're writing exam P or FM soon. Okay, so in this video, I realized that Actually, I've been running the study strategy program for just about one year now. And during that time, I've given members tons and tons of different little nuggets of advice. So I decided a good idea would be to put them all in a video. Okay, not all of them, but 50 of them in a video for everyone else to take advantage of. So that's what I'm doing in this video. Let's get into it. Okay, the first tip today is to don't memorize any formulas. Now, a lot of you will already know because I talk about this all the time, but I don't actually recommend that you memorize formulas because that just means that you are memorizing and it doesn't necessarily mean you're learning and understanding what all these formulas mean. I recommend that since you're going to be doing so many practice problems during your study period that you just wait until the very last week to memorize because that's when you'll know which formulas you haven't already had time to memorize. Okay, next is study for six days a week consistently. It's really easy to procrastinate when you're studying, so if you make sure to study six days a week, you're going to find that consistency beats just studying for five or six hours all on the weekend, and that will just get you through your studying quicker and more efficiently by studying in smaller chunks on a regular basis rather than all on the weekend or one or two days a week. The next tip is to do 700 or more practice problems throughout your study period because doing tons and tons of practice problems is really important for exam P or FM. It's one of the main ways that you'll actually learn the material. Some people learn better by just reading material, but a lot of you, including myself, learn by actually putting what you've learned into action and the practice problems help you do that. Okay, next is to start studying with at least 14 weeks left before your exam. As you know, in order to qualify for the pass guarantee in my study strategy program, you have to join at least 14 weeks before your anticipated exam day. And that's just because that's how long it takes. Studying for these exams isn't something that you can do in a month or a few weeks. You have to really take some time to study for them properly. So at least 14 weeks should be your plan. Next is to pick study materials that fit your learning style. I will leave a link in the description of this video where you can actually go to my blog and get all these tips. And in that blog post, there are actually links to all these different resources that I'm going to mention. So I've actually created a resource for you that goes through all the best study materials for exam P and FM. So I highly recommend you check out that to learn what study guide or study manual or whatever study materials might be best for you and your learning style. Next is to do one practice exam at least every week for your last six weeks. Actually, if you do a practice exam for every week in your last eight weeks, that would be even better. But when you get to your last two or so weeks, you'll want to be doing more than that, probably three to four at a minimum, because practice exams really help you learn how to speed up and they help you just get familiar with how you react in exam situations and stuff. And you want to be familiar with that before exam day. The next tip is that accountability makes a huge difference. If you can find someone to be accountable, of course, you can join the S study strategy program, the SSP, or you can find an accountability partner that is also writing the exam or maybe just a friend. But if you have someone to be accountable to, you're going to find that you stay much more consistent with your studying. And that's obviously a good thing. Okay, next is don't study for more than one exam at a time. A lot of people come to me and they want to try to write an exam one month and then another one the next month and I really just don't recommend doing that because you're going to be splitting your efforts 50-50 between the two exams and you might just end up 
getting 50% on both of the exams and that's not a pass on either. So it's better to just put all your energy into one exam, be sure that you're going to pass it and then move on to the next one. Next is tip 11 and this is that the last six weeks of your study period are the most important. You should not let everything fall apart now. You've worked so hard up to those last six weeks. So keep up the momentum, keep going and get through those six weeks and stay strong. Okay, next is to get your calculator early because, well, a lot of people just wait and wait until close to the exam day and then get their calculator, but if you do that, you're not going to get time to practice on them. These calculators are probably a bit different than other calculators that you've used in the past, so you'll want to make sure you have plenty of time to practice with them. In the blog post that I linked to below, there's a link to all my favorite calculators. Okay, next is tip 13, and that's redo every single practice problem that you get wrong at least two to three times throughout your study period. Doing practice problems that you get wrong will help solidify the concepts in your head and just make sure that you actually understand them. Okay, tip 14 is don't move ahead in your study materials until you understand them at about 75%. It's okay if you don't fully understand them, but since a lot of the study material is cumulative, you want to make sure that you have a pretty good understanding of everything in each section before you move on. Next is to fully understand each solution that you do for any practice problem. So it's no good just to try a practice problem, get it wrong, and then just skip over the solution even if you don't understand it because that's just going to mean that you still don't understand how to do it. And what if one of those questions comes up on the exam? You're going to be pretty disappointed if you had the opportunity to learn how to do that kind of a question, but you didn't take it. So make sure that you fully understand the solution to every problem that you do. Next is if you fail an exam, please don't give up. I know you can do it. I know it's demotivating, but keep going. In the study strategy program, I've helped people that have passed on their third, fourth, or fifth time. So that just goes to show that even if you fail once or twice, it's still possible for you. Keep it up, keep going, and don't give up. Okay, next is number 17. And that's to register for your exam close to the registration deadline. If you register months before that, well, first of all, there's really no reason to because you're still going to be able to later. But another thing is that when you get close to the registration date or the registration deadline, that's when you can decide whether or not you feel like you'll be ready in the next month or so. If you don't feel that way, then you don't have to register. But if you do, then you can. Okay, the next tip is that it can be really, really helpful and it can help you get through exams quicker if you have a coach or a mentor to help you through it all. So if that's what you're looking for, join the SSP, the study strategy program. Okay, next is before you commit to writing an exam, figure out exactly when you're going to fit in time to study for it. Everyone is different, but for most people, well, actually, I wouldn't even say most people. The rule of thumb that has been thrown around is that it takes a hundred hours to study for each hour of exam. So, for exam P and FM, that's approximately 300 hours. Now, I don't know that I necessarily agree with that. I think it's very different for everyone, so it's hard to say, but definitely plan on spending a lot of time studying, hundreds of hours. So you need to figure out exactly where in your schedule you're going to fit that studying in. You are going to probably have to sacrifice some things that you're currently doing in order to fit in study time. Okay, next is ADAPT. ADAPT is a great tool if you need more practice problems, but there are lots and lots of free practice problems online. So while ADAPT is great, you don't really need it. So don't feel pressure to get it if you already have tons of questions available. There are free questions from the SOA, TIA, there are questions in your study material, so that's just my opinion on it. I think you can get a lot more value from having someone to help you through and guide you during your last month or your last six weeks, so just something to consider. Next is tip 21, and that is to not wait until the perfect time to write your exam. 
there's never going to be a perfect time where you just feel like you have so much time to study and you can just fit everything in. Life is busy and you're going to have to sacrifice things like I said, so don't wait until the perfect time to start studying for your exam. Number 22 is the easiest way to stop making silly mistakes is to just focus. A lot of the time we put ourselves on autopilot and it just gets kind of embedded in our mind how to do things and then we're not really thinking about it. Actually, this is a tip from Juliana and she has been helping me in the study strategy program just to answer emails and things like that. And this is a great tip from her, so I didn't want to take credit for that one. Okay, next is schedule fun events every week that you can look forward to. I know a lot of you are studying, 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 working, and maybe you've got classes and stuff too, and it's just all work and not a lot of fun. So if you schedule in things into your calendar that are actually fun, you'll have something to look forward to. Next is that if you have some kind of medical condition that might cause you to not be able to perform as well on the exam as some other people may be able to, then it's possible that the SOA will give you some kind of exemption or allow you some special privileges or something. So contact the SOA if you think that might apply to you. Next is to aim to consistently achieve 24 out of 30 on exam P or 28 out of 35 on exam FM while you're doing practice problems. If you work up to that level, you'll have a pretty good chance of passing. Make sure that's on a variety of different exams though because if you stick to just one type of exam like TIA exams or ADAPT exams, it may not be an accurate representation. What I recommend you do is do it on a variety of different exams. Next is in your last week of studying, redo tons and tons of questions that you've gotten wrong throughout your study period. I already talked about why it is a good idea to redo questions that you've got wrong in other videos, but that's a really good idea. Get tons of those done in the last week. Number 28. We're just over halfway. I got to hurry up here. Everything you do in your last month should be timed. Time everything in your last month. Uh, Okay, number 29 is Khan Academy and YouTube are great free resources to search if you're unsure about something in your study material. So if you need a different perspective on something, then go check out those sources. Okay, number 30 is that you don't need two different sets of study materials. A lot of the time people say that they're going to get TIA and ACTAX or ASM and coaching actuaries or something. You don't need two. Pick one and that will be good enough. They all have the same stuff in them. If you do end up getting two, just pick one as your primary study materials and then use the other one if you need like a different perspective or something. But you can always go to YouTube or Khan Academy for those kind of things anyway. Okay, number 31 is get rid of all distractions when you're studying. It's the most efficient way to study, so just get rid of them. Okay, number 32 is about picking your exam date. Pick something near the end of the exam window so that you have that little bit of extra time to study and you'll probably thank be thankful for it by the time exam day comes. Number 33 is you may be able to get a discount on your exam fee depending on what country you live in. Link to where you can find out about those countries is in the blog post that I will link to below. Okay, number 34 is are you having trouble staying focused? Figure out what you want to get done in a certain amount of time and time yourself. I found that a lot of the time if you time yourself, you're able to get things done a lot quicker, you're more efficient and that just helps with studying because a lot of the time, the reason that you're feeling unfocused or distracted is because you don't really have anything else you need to get done. So having that time pressure can really help. Okay, if you don't understand something, ask. A lot of the time, you'll spend a lot of time, like 30 minutes or an hour, just trying to figure out what's going on. But a better use of your time is just to ask. If you ask, then you are going to be able to get a quick answer and you will be able to spend that time that you otherwise would have spent just trying to figure something out. You'll be able to spend it on doing more problems or just understanding things better overall. Okay, number 36 is to take a nap after work if you're having a hard time studying because you just feel really drained and tired. Take a nap and you'll feel more refreshed. You could also try studying in the morning or at lunch. 
This is similar to another tip, but a little bit different. If you're using ADAPT, aim for 28 out of 35 on exam FM or 24 out of 30 on exam P, but aim for level 6 exams. If you can get up to level 6, passing them with those scores that I just talked about, well, you're in a pretty good position for exam day. Next is calculus. If you're rusty on your calculus, go to Khan Academy. They have awesome videos that go into depth on calculus concepts that you probably learned in the past or maybe not, but you'll get your information that you need there. Number 39, almost there. Do 15 practice problems in a row if you are having trouble with a certain topic or if you find you're taking too long on certain types of questions. Do 15 of them in a row and you'll find that you speed up and understand things better. 40 is to begin with the end in mind. Before you even start studying, plan out how you're going to get from where you are right now, just starting all the way to fully prepared on exam day. If you have that all mapped out, then you'll know what steps you need to take each week. If you don't plan it out, then you're just kind of going to wing it and that's probably not going to work because you're going to just be behind, probably. <laughs> okay. Number 41 is before exam day, read my post called what to bring and what to expect. Link to that in the description. Number 42 is that the foods that you're eating during your exam prep period can really make a big difference in your ability to focus and concentrate. You might remember I actually talked about this in a video I recorded probably about a month ago now. And there's lots of detail in there about the certain foods that help focus and concentration, but again, Link in the description to the blog post that I wrote that has links to that article. Number 43 is to say no to things that you don't have time for. You have to learn to do that. A lot of the time we say thing yes to doing things that we probably didn't even want to do in the first place, but now that you're studying, you really have to take advantage of the free time that you do have and you have to say no to things that you just can't fit into your schedule anymore. 44 is to talk to your partner or spouse before you decide to write an exam so that they know how much time it's really going to take and you guys can both work out a plan just how things are going to work after you start studying because you're not going to have as much time to spend with your spouse or your partner. You are not going to be able to do all the things around the house that you may have been doing and it's just going to be harder. So if you two come up with a plan, that'll make things a lot easier and less stressful. Okay, exam fees that you pay by yourself are tax deductible. I'm not 100% sure if this is true in the US, but it is true in Canada. Okay, if you have a fear that you won't pass, stop it. Be confident in yourself. You can do this. I know you can. I've helped so many people do it that thought they couldn't and they can. So you can too. Okay, number 47 is draw diagrams whenever you can. Number 48 is allocate your time wisely. You should only have to spend about a third of your study time or one month on going through your study materials. Whichever of those is shorter, one third of your study time or one month, is what you should dedicate to going through your study materials. Everything else should be used for practice questions. 49 is a college course, one or two or three, isn't going to be enough to pass these exams. You need to invest in yourself, get the study materials that are going to help you and the support that's going to help you so that you can pass quickly and efficiently. Okay, last tip, and this is my favorite tip. Okay, you don't have to do this alone. There are thousands of people in my Facebook groups that you can join. I will leave a link to those in the description below. They Every day I put out a new daily exam P question or exam FM question and there's tons of people in those groups that just help each other. So if you're not in there, go join. You don't have to do it alone. I can help you too. So join the study strategy program if you're looking for guidance and support. Anyway, I know that these are tough exams. So I've tried to provide so many different resources that can help you. So take advantage of them. A lot of them are free for you to use. So just understand that you don't have to do this alone. If you're trying to, you don't have to. Okay, so that is my last tip. I'm sorry, I didn't think this video would get so long, but it is. You hopefully watched it on one and a half times speed. Anyway, go check out the blog post for any links that you are interested in and want to know more about. I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye!